Welcome everybody to the playground. Catch us, catch us, playground. Catch 22. YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Catch22. Thanks for hanging out with us today. As always, if you find today's content useful or maybe you feel like you learned something, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to find your way back to the channel, make sure you turn notifications on so you know every time we go live or post new content to the channel. Today's goal on likes. We're going for 30 likes. Woohoo! Super big number, I know, but hey, look, man, 30 it is. Help us get that number and thanks for supporting the channel. Today, as you can see, we're taking a look at the uh, the site Warzone Ranked. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. If you haven't, it's exactly as it's listed right here, wzranked.com. Just make sure you go visit them and check them out. These guys probably do some of the most in-depth reporting when it comes to stats on weapons. Uh, you can see meta trends. You can see how weapons are performing. You can see a usage rate, a KD rate, like, like the whole nine yards. They, they really go into a lot of detail, uh, putting together the stats and the weapons and things like that. That you can also go and see your own individual stats and how you rank on using certain weapons and so on and so forth. So really a great site, a lot of good information in there. Uh, make sure you go check them out if you ever want to do your own research or anything like that. But today what we're going to be looking at primarily is what is the meta, right? Like we just had an update. We've seen some nerfs, some buffs, things change. We're kind of in that funky moment where there, there's not really a clear picture of what that looks like, right? Like we're still trying to decide what's the gun that's going to take the top of the mountain, become the king of the roost, and everybody's going to try to trend toward it and uh, blah, ah, trend toward it and start using it when they're playing Warzone. So looking at this, what you'll see here is basically they, they got the items ranked by guns. The, these are primary weapons. Uh, and over here, they have the pick ratio. And what the pick ratio percentage is, is how many people that are currently playing Warzone or using this gun on average in, in a match, right? Like, like when you go into a lobby, 16% of your lobby is probably going to be running the Krig 6. And most people that play with the Krig 6, the average KD ratio with that is a 1.14. Um, so looking at this and how they have it ranked, just from the top 10, we have the Krig coming in at number one, the Car 98, which I think it's been everybody's fan favorite. I don't know. I think the Swiss K31 does outperform it, but everybody's kind of just comfortable with that Car 98. It's something that they know, uh, and a lot of people just don't, they don't want to change, right? So the Car 98 stays in at number two just by usage rate. Uh, the Bullfrogs coming in at number three. The Bullfrog, I think, is an interesting gun. It's it's never really just been meta, right? It's always been kind of middle of the pack. It's a solid gun. It performs very well. But I don't think that, that it's ever just been a standout that, that shows up in the majority of classes and so on and so forth. Um, I think the thing with the Bullfrog is that's, that's what I would call my easy meta, right? Like there's two different kinds of metas. There's an easy meta and there's a hard meta or or a, a easy meta and an experienced meta, I guess would be a better way to word it. So I think the Bullfrog would fall probably in the easy meta. That's for players who who have a, they struggle with guns with a lot of recoil. Um, maybe maybe they they just, they, they're, they don't have a high KD ratio. You know what I mean? Kind of kind of newer players to the game, doesn't have as much van movement and things like that going on in the match and so they trend to guns that are easier to use and the bullfrog for what it's worth it's just it's easy to use right lot, not a lot of recoil on it uh good ammo capacity i mean for what it's worth it's a solid gun i just don't think it's a it's a top tier meta type gun right it's just never been there so Looking at number four is the MAC-10. We all know the MAC-10 has been the MAC daddy of Warzone running in most of the metas. Um, it's, it's been sniper support. It's It's been, you know, paired up with ARs. Like the MAC-10 is probably the single-handed most solid uh, SMG that there was in the game. The problem with it, recoil, right? So you're going to see a lot of people trend to use it, but a lot of those are a little more experienced. They can do a little better control with their guns and so on and so forth. And that's who you'll lot, you know, primarily see the MAC-10 with. Uh, uh, compared to the bullfrog. So looking at the next one, there's the Swiss K that I was talking about. I think it or the car 98 could easily be two and five. You could swap them up. I think it's more personal preference than anything. Although, like I said, I think the Swiss K outperforms the car 98 in, in more ways than not. Um, but people are just comfortable with the car 98. And ultimately you're going to play with what you're comfortable with. Um, 
Coming in at number six is the Stoner, which is which is surprising, right? But when this site is ranking things and, and looking at data, there's there's a a I guess a hit zone that wasn't really factored into a lot of guns, and that's in the neck area, right? You always talk about head shots, chest shots, limb shots, things like that. But there is actually a damage percentage, a hit percentage when it comes to the neck area. So if you're if you're starting in the neck and working up to a head, it's different than starting in the chest and working up to the head. So um, I think that's really what what helps the stoner is is when you look at that that percentage of that gun. That's what kind of drives it up and keeps it going. Uh, coming in at number seven is the the MP5 from the Modern Warfare, which honestly I think might be a little higher if we look at this thing in a few days. Maybe, maybe not. Supposedly there is a hidden nerf in the game that that just gave this TTK. A, a, I mean, it just like blew it up. Like the MP5 from Modern Warfare is supposedly overpowered right now. I'm sure it was a mistake when they did the update and they're going to come back and correct that. Um, so use it while you can, right? But when this rankings were done, the, it was number seven because a lot of people probably haven't caught on to that yet. Still got a 4% pick rate with a 1.1 KD for people that use it on average. So, and then of course you have your growl making it back in with the, the growl 5.56. I always said that was a solid gun. It's still in my loadouts. Uh, it's mostly my 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 quick grab ghost class right with fully loaded on it. It's something I'm going to grab at the last circle or next to last circle if I have to come back from the gulag or something like that. Um, just because it has the cleanest sights in the game and and I think it's really a solid weapon. And again, easy meta, right? It's really easy to control. So a lot of people really kind of drift over that way to the ground. But it is coming in at number eight. Number nine, which is a little surprising, is the OTS-9. I think it should honestly be a little higher, but what you'll understand with that is that falls more in the experienced meta, and I think that's why a lot of less experienced players are kind of scared to use it, right? You got to manage ammo. You've got to manage recoil. There's so many things going on, but if you can hit your shots with the OTS-9, you'll definitely just do some damage when you're out there playing and it's a solid gun. It's TTK, it's super nasty. Uh, the recoil on it is a little hard to control, but the recoil is more like an up and left pattern. So if you can learn to manage that, man, you it's a solid secondary to have in any class that you're running. I think it competes, if not outperforms with the MAC-10. Um, in my opinion, I'd say the OTS-9 is probably the top SMG that we have right now. So uh, and then number 10 is the Farah 83. I think the FAR for most people was, was yeah, it was kind of semi-meta there for a few weeks. Everybody loved the FAR. Low recoil, again, easy meta. Um, it, it kind of fell off as they started doing the updates. That's when you saw the Krig 6. It didn't really get nerfed or buffed it, but this one got nerfed, and so it kind of crept up and kind of took over. Um, but you can still play with the FAR 83, and it's definitely a solid gun right now. There, there's not really any complaints for that. So um, I know a lot of people are still playing with it. I think the the TTK when it when it got the nerf kind of kind of messed it up a little bit but but you still see it out there you still see it in ground loadouts and so on and so forth uh 3.41 percent of the people in your matches are going to pick that gun and it still almost got it about a 1 kd right so uh looking at the next one is the c58 and the c58 for me i think is still number one where the Krig 6 is right I think the difference is Krig 6 is easy meta, C58 is advanced meta, right? Experienced meta. Uh, the recoil on it just scares people. So if, you, if you're not good at being able to manage those patterns and keep your recoil under control, then, you know, they're, they're just, they're not going to play with it. But for what it's worth, it's TTK is still just solid. I mean, the gun, if you can control it and you can play with it, it is hands down my number one pick for your long range weapon when you're playing Warzone. No complaints there. And then, of course, wrapping up the top 15, we have the M4A1, the Milano 821, the Kilo 141, and the XM4. Again, the Kilo hasn't been top of the mountain. This was back like around January. And you see this chart up here. That kind of shows when the game launched versus as the game progressed, right? We're slowly figuring things out, and then hop, we got a meta, right? And then there was some updates to the game. People were trying to figure it out, and then hop, we got a meta. Right around here in January is when the Kilo was running. Right around here is when the FFAR was taking off. Right around here is when the Krig 6 kind of hit. And then we've just kind of been, you know, checking things out ever since. People keep seeing that nerf on the Krig 6. They keep getting nervous, swapping up, going to other guns. New guns are introduced to the games. People are trying them out. And it's just kind of got us in that place where nobody really knows what's the top of the mountain right now, right? 
So looking at what I would say is probably the the easy meta, right? In in terms of people who are scared of recoil, people who want a gun that shoots real easy, that, that shoots straight, that's easy to control, has a good ammo capacity and so on and so forth. Um, they just like to play the game, but don't really want to have to work too much, I guess, when they're playing. Uh, if I had to pick the easy meta right now, just looking at the rankings and the stats, I'd probably say it's going to be the Krig 6 and the Bullfrog, right? Hands down, Krig 6 and the Bullfrog. You run those two as your class setup, you technically cannot go wrong. Uh, I think they're definitely a solid class. I, I'd, I'd almost put the MAC-10 in front of the Bullfrog, but we're talking easy meta. Uh, so we're we're talking Krig-6 and, and the Bullfrog. And then if I'm looking at maybe a more experienced meta, I'm going to go with the C-58, which, which is down here in number 11. But again, the only reason it's down there is, is because people are just scared to play with it, right? The majority of people don't like the recoil like we talked about. And then I'm gonna pair that C58 up with the OTS-9. Now I'm gonna show you why. If you look up here at the Krig-6 and the Bullfrog, right? Look over here at its KD rate, 1.14, 1.14. Their TTKs are consistent. Uh, they're easy to hit shots with. They, they have good ammo capacities. The Bullfrog alone, like you don't even have to add an ammo capacity and it comes out the gate with one. You can use that slot for an extra attachment. Uh, or you can add a larger mag on there if you want to, but it's really just a waste of space because it comes with plenty of ammo just, just out the door. 16% um, of people are picking the Krig, 7% of the people are picking the Bullfrog. So if you want the easy meta, I'm going to say Krig 6 and Bullfrog is your go-to guns. Um, thinking about your Krig 6. Krig 6 barrel 15-inch CMV mil spec is what I run. I just personally choose that. I know that's a debate. You can go with that or go with the Ranger, but but I think the CMV mil spec for me uh, is is just the better barrel, man. You, you get a little more control with the Ranger and things like that, but, but mobility and stuff. But I, I like the mil the mil spec. I just think it's a more solid barrel, uh, and it's going to help your recoil a little more with that gun as well. Your optic, everybody goes with the axle arms three times. Your muzzle, of course, agency suppressor. Under barrel, you're gonna go with your field agent grip and ammunition, you're gonna run with your Salvo 60 round mags. Now, when you're looking at your Bullfrog, Bullfrog, I'm gonna run the Gru Suppressor as my muzzle, the 7.4 Task Force on the barrel, Tiger Team Spotlight, right, under the laser slot. And then for my stock, KGB Skeletal Stock and ammunition, you can run a 65 round, or like I said, it comes out the gate with plenty of ammunition, and you could use that as, as a rear grip slot or something to that extent, maybe putting a serpent wrap or something like that on there, um, just to help with the control and mobility and things like that of the gun. So. That's my easy meta. So easy meta, Krig 6, Bullfrog. You want to know what it is, go try them out. I think you'll really enjoy it. So looking right here at our KD ratio, what we're going to do now is we're going to click and we're going to rate this and we're going to rate it from highest to lowest, right? Look at the KD ratio, the OTS 9, right? 3% of the people pick it. Those are more experienced players. They can control it. They know how to play with it. They know how to maneuver. They know how to corner. They know how to get in and use the gun properly. And they overall has the highest KD ratio in the war zone currently, right? At a 1.64. Look what's coming in second now when you're looking at KD, the C58. So it comes in at a 1.38. Again, more experienced players. That's why that KD is a little higher because they're more experienced. But when you can control it and you can, can play, top two guns right there, man. That's your meta class. The C58 for your long range option and your OTS9 coming in for your secondary, your SMG and so on and so forth. When I when I put this back in order this way by, by pick ratio, right? Look what happens. That's why the Krig and the Bullfrog is up here at one and three because more people, the majority of players that play Warzone or your mediocre average Joes, I mean, they just are. They're not pros, right? Myself included. I think I'm good. Actually, I just say I'm not bad, but I'm not a professional player, man. So most people are going to tend to go toward that Krig 6 and toward that Bullfrog just because it's easier to use. And that's why the pick ratio is higher. But when you get into experienced, which a lot of people are, are just not on that next level up, that's why these guns aren't being picked as much. And that's the OTS-9 and the C-58. And you'll see the difference the average KD ratio of players that use it versus what we just saw with the Krig 6 and the Bullfrog. So if I'm running the C58 as my long range option, 
I'm going to put that uh, agency suppressor on it, the 18 and a half inch task force for the barrel, the field agent grip for the under barrel, ammunition, of course, the Stagnag 55 round, and my optics, the axle arms three times. I think it's just the standard standard load uh, for that type of gun, and that's that's what I'm going to run with it. And then when I get into my OTS-9, it's going to be the GT, the, the uh, GT, the GRU suppressor, right? For my for my muzzle, my 8.1 inch task force for my barrel, the Tiger Team Spotlight coming in for the laser, the Spetnaz 40 round for my ammunition, and the KGB skeletal stock for my stock, right? Best setup I think you can run with that gun. My opinion. You may have a different opinion. Try different attachments. See what you like. See what happens. Uh, but again, I'm going to call it, man. I'm going to say Easy Meta, Creek 6, and Bullfrog. If you're a little more advanced or you're a little more experienced, or maybe you just want to play with something that, in my opinion, I think is better, you just have to learn to control the recoil, run the C-58 in the OTS-9. If you're looking something more for sniper support, I'd, I'd say you can still run the CAR-98 and the MAC-10, although I think, and, and it's not even listed in the top 15, but if you come right down here to number 17, right there the ak-47 cold war version i think hands down uh run it like an smg setup run it with a car 98 or with a swiss k or just any sniper rifle run it as sniper support and i still think that is your best option to to have in the game is the ak-47 for sniper support so there you have it man those are my picks again man i hope you enjoyed this video as always i stream every tuesday thursday and sunday from 7 p.m to 11 p.m central over on twitch tv i'm also on facebook i'm also on youtube make sure you come check out the channels make sure you subscribe to them make sure you turn notifications on and as always i'm catch 22 and i'm gonna catch you on the playground I'm out of here.